Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, I know today is going to be a great day. Why do I feel that way? I don't only feel that way, I know so because God has sent His word. Now, because He has sent His word, I can tell you for sure it's going to be a great day. So make up your mind Rise up in your heart and accept God's thoughts for this day. Tell yourself, I agree with God. Today is going to be a great day. Now, before going to today's broadcast, I've got a lot in my spirit to share with you today. But can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now as we make this demand. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god now if you make that demand with me open your heart and believe god now when we believe god we don't we don't put our mind on certain things now sometimes you can limit God in your mind. If you begin to consider your qualification, what, what do I, how do I qualify for something earthly? You begin to look at your background. I don't even know anybody that can help me in this regard. Now, the fact that you don't know anybody doesn't limit you. It only limits you in your mind because you accepted not to move forward because of that information that is coming to you. I don't know anybody. You remember the man by the well, by the pool of Bethsaida? Jesus met him. Now, this was Jesus standing before him. And he asked him, do you want to get well? And here's the first thing the man said. Oh, I don't have anybody to help. Now, that's what has been on his mind for those 38 years. I don't have anybody to help me. Now, only God knows, probably, he had spoken to some family members. Hey, can someone accompany me to that pool? At least, when the angel stares the water, the person's job is just to push me into the water and I'll be healed. Now, he believed he would get healed by the stirring of that water. But his challenge was getting someone to go stay there with him. What he didn't realize is that God is not limited to only one way of healing people. That's what he didn't realize. So his faith, instead of being in God, was now in the stirring of the water. Meanwhile, it is God that sends an angel to stir that water. It's the same thing with the life of a lot of people. And that's what it means by walking in gross darkness. So you, you tell yourself, I would have believed God for a better job if I had gone to school. I would have believed God for a better life if I had the capital to start that business. All these things are limitations in your mind. And I'll tell you the truth. They are not limitations to God. God doesn't consider first your qualification before he chooses to bless you. That's why the thing about the gospel is this. Whosoever believes. Whosoever ever believes question then is what qualification do you need to be a whosoever the only qualification you need to be a whosoever is to be a whosoever praise god yeah that that's the only qualification you need so a whosoever can actually be a whosoever hallelujah now what does it mean to be a whosoever wherever you are whatever background whatever location that doesn't hold water if you will stand up today and say you know what i'm going to put my steps 
in line with God's truth, you will get God's results. Two scriptures I want to share with you today. And what we've been dealing with, darkness versus light. Now, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. God instructing Joshua here, and he told him something very striking. This is God talking to a man called Joshua. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, I want you to follow this now, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success he says if you want to have good success if you want to make your way prosperous here is the condition don't allow the word of god to depart from your mouth what does that mean always make sure whatever comes out of your mouth is in line with god's wisdom it's in line with god's truth he he didn't say this book of the law you must put in your mouth no he says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth what's he saying make sure whatever whatever is coming out of your mouth is in line with the wisdom of God it's in line with every word and law that God has given. So where do you watch? He says, watch your mouth. But then he says, now, he says, you don't allow it out of your mouth. But this is what you should do. Even as you watch God over your mouth. He says, meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's wisdom day and day night what does it mean day and night sit down in the morning and start reciting scriptures no sir sit down in the night and start reciting scriptures no sir what he is saying is when he says meditate on it day and night he is saying everything you have to deal with in the day or in the night make sure your thoughts and your decisions based on these things are from the place of the word. So how do you meditate now? He is not just in the sense of, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall know one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not know, sir. What he's saying is, and I want you to catch this, it will bless you. So I need something. And I sit down and I'm thinking, how do I get this thing? How do I get this thing that I need? And you know, the moment you see that lots of options will begin to come to your mind. But then you begin to ask yourself after each thought crosses your mind, how does this line up with God's word? How does this line up with God's truth? Oh, if I if I go in this direction, oh, there's this scripture that ah, I know I will offend, I will offend the word of God. So I, I shouldn't go that way. Let me think of another way to go about this thing. Oh, if I go about it this way, I'm going to offend the word of God. I'm going to offend the wisdom of God. Uh -uh, let me think about it this other way. Now, you think about it. Now, what are you doing? Your, your thoughts are working. Your brain is working. You are actually meditating on God's word. That's what you're doing. And you're doing it day and night. Now, that can only be effective when first and foremost, you are acquainted with the thoughts of God. You are acquainted with the things that God has said. And that's why it's important to read your Bible. That's why it's important to go to church. That's why it's important to attend meetings where spiritual thoughts are being shared with personal testimonies. See? Because without the personal testimonies, you are just in a religious place. The personal testimonies is 
a conviction that this thing that we are talking about is real and is true. The Bible is a compendium of personal testimonies. So the Bible in itself is a book of testimonies. So you see, now when you are acquainted with the testimony of God, what that does to you is, Anytime your thoughts are going outside the testimony that you have already acquainted yourself with comes up as a red flag. Now, if you pay attention to those red flags, what do they do? They will send you back to the way that you're supposed to walk. Now, I want you to watch this now. So he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. It says that you may observe to do according, according, according. Now, let me explain that to you. For example, God, the wisdom of God says, you shall lend to nations you shall not borrow. Now, that is God's thoughts concerning you. That is God's plan concerning you. Now, that is, that is, that is how God reasons where you're concerned. You be a lender, not a borrower, all right? So, now, here you are, you need money for whatever reason. You want to build your house, you want to buy land, whatever you need. Well, you want, you want whatever money you need for anything at all. And you begin to dabble with the thoughts of borrowing. I think I'll just borrow this money and get this thing done with, and then I'm going to pay for, I mean, they say, they say I can pay in 10 years, they say I can pay in 5 years. Now, it looks good in the world. I told you something, we're dealing with darkness versus light. So it looks good in the world. The world will tell you, look, there is no rich person who hasn't borrowed money. Yeah, that's what the world will tell you. The world will tell you, look, you live by other people's money. Yeah, that's what the world will tell you. Financial experts will tell you, look, you have this land, you can convert it into stuff and, and take a loan from the bank. And in this number of years, you will begin to do this. And there are, there are rich men who are always on loans. See that now? Now, you as a child of God, you find yourself in this situation and you're wondering, what do I do? Okay, should I take a loan? And then you begin to meditate on if I take a loan, how does that line up with the wisdom of God for my life? How does that line up with the truth of God for me? And then you begin to meditate on that. But he said, you shall lend, you shall not borrow. Okay, so now, is there any place that he has encouraged us to borrow? You begin to think and think and, and he say, oh, no, I can't find any. I can't find any. Okay, since I cannot find any, what do I do? This need is before me. It is clear I need this money and, and, and I don't know any other way to get this thing done but to borrow. But now the word of God doesn't give me clear way or clear or give me any leeway to borrow. So what do I do? Ah, if the word of God doesn't give me a clear path to borrow it, then I cannot go. Now what are you doing? You are observing to do according to all that is written therein. That's what you're doing. So okay, what do I do? Uh -huh. Now watch this. Watch this. He said, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Hear me, brothers and sisters. You are a child of God. What kind of success do you want to have? Do you want to have a success that is, that is measurable by the world standard or by God's standard? That's your choice. If you say, you know what, everybody is boring, what is there? As long as you want to, you're, you're sure, you're committed to paying, what is there? And then you go, take the loan, borrow, find out good. You will make some good success, but it's not according to God's word. 
your good success will not line up with the thoughts and the success of God. It will only line up with the success of the people of the world. But hear me. He said, you will make your way. How do I make my way? I will show you here. Praise God. Book of Psalms. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, blessed Lord Jesus. Psalm chapter 91. Psalm chapter 91, verse 11. Watch this now. He says, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Look at this. God shall give his angels charge over you. And what's their work? To keep you in all your ways. So, there are angels that have been given charge concerning me. And that charge is, hey angels, my son is being born on Soso Day. And this is my plan for his life. He's going to be a great man. And these are the charge that I give you concerning him. At every junction, you must see to it that a passageway is open to him when he comes in my name. Now that's why the Bible says, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Now what does it mean, come in the name of the Lord? He doesn't say, oh, knock, knock. Yeah, I come in the name of the Lord. Oh, you're a blessed man. No, sir. Coming in the name of the Lord means I wear the cloth of the Lord. I wear the cloth of the word of God. See that now? So now, hear, hear me, hear me. This, this, this will bless you. Hear me. He says, if I meditate on God's word day and night. I told you how to do that earlier. It says, I will observe to do according to all that is written therein. Yeah? And now when I observe to do all that is written therein, then I will make my way prosperous. So I use the example of the man who needs money and then he's considering taking a loan. Okay, so now he can't take a loan because his mind couldn't find any word of God that gives him the permission or gives him the idea or wisdom to go take a loan. Now, because he couldn't find that in all honesty, he makes up his mind, I'm not going to take a loan. Now, not taking a loan doesn't mean shutting down that desire. Now, when he chooses not, chose not, chooses not to take a loan, guess what happened? The angels that God have kept and given charge consigning him, they are there. Now, what is their job at that time? Their job, remember, it says to keep you in all your ways. So, now I'm not going to take that loan. So, how am I going to get this job? Now, from that moment when you made up your mind not to go the way of the world, from that moment, you activate angelic activities. You know why? Because that day, that time you came to that place of need, do you know the solution was right there? Even though you don't see it, it was there. So the moment you make up your mind, I'm not talking about dabbling, eh? let me try for one week. If it doesn't work, I'll go take a look. And that's, you, you're not started yet. You are saying, no, since the word of God doesn't, I, I can't find any, any word that propels me to go in this direction. I'm handicapped. I, I can't do that. So you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I really need to get this thing done. And your word doesn't give me the permission to go in this direction. So what do I do? I need your help. You see, when that time, you, because you are not giving up, you are finding God's way 
of getting this thing done. He said, you see, at that time, angels begin to minister to you. Angels begin to strengthen you. Suddenly, you get an idea. Suddenly, you, you begin to receive fresh ideas. Sometimes, I'll tell you the truth, no one has received this kind of ideas before. And then you just begin to think of it and say, hey, you can get this done this way. I can get this. Done. Oh, what's going on? What's Hey, I'll tell you what's going on. Angels, angels are strengthening you. Because that's what you need at that time. They begin to bring out those secrets that no man has ever seen. Those wisdom that was hidden from the beginning of the world. You remember Moses, they got to that bitter water and, and wondering what to do. Now, that water has been bitter for ages. But they got there and God says, Hey, see that tree over there? Yes, sir. Cut it. Throw the branch into the river and the water will be sweet. They cut it. So the, the, the solution to the bitter water has always been right there. But nobody could see. Nobody could fathom it out. Nobody could join the two together until the word of God came to a man who was meditating on God day and night. Brothers and sisters, you can make your way prosperous. This is just how you can make your way prosperous. So you now understand why we give. You now understand why we give our tithes. You now understand why we give our offerings. This is the reason. When we get to every junction, there is a way that he has set for us. My time is up today. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I just would love to pray for you today. I pray that the Spirit of God will open your eyes to see every solution that He has made before you got to that challenge. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray every challenge you get through, your eyes will see the solution that God has made ready already. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.